Hello, in this video, I'd like to show you how to determine the scale factor uh, when you are given a dilation. In this case, it's a dilation showing two triangles. And how do you determine the scale factor? Well, first, we need to establish what actually is a dilation. So a dilation is a type of geometric transformation that changes the size of an object. So I can see it says we're going from triangle A to triangle B. So it looks like uh, the shape is growing in this case, so that is a dilation. So the other part here, in addition to a change in the size, is that all parts of the object will grow or shrink by the same scale factor. So that's what we're, we're asked here. What is the scale factor? And the scale factor, a couple things about scale factor. Scale factor is what you multiply by to get the new side lengths. So I'm starting with triangle A, I'm moving to triangle B, and I'm going to multiply the side lengths of triangle A by some number to determine what the new side lengths of triangle B will be. If the scale factor is one, we're gonna multiply these side lengths by one. Well, multiplying by one doesn't change any quantities, so the side lengths will remain the same when the scale factor is one. The shape will stay the same size. That's a boring dilation. If the scale factor is greater than one, we're multiplying all these by some number greater than one, that will cause the values to increase in quantity, and that will mean the side lengths are all larger. So when the scale factor is greater than one, the shape will grow. If the scale factor is less than one, the shape will shrink. If you multiply by a number less than one, you're going to get a smaller value. So we want to keep this in mind and think ahead to think, what kind of value should we be getting? Uh, it's probably good to think about this and estimate it first before you start to calculate. So I can see I'm going from triangle A to triangle B. It looks like my first triangle is smaller. I'm growing to a larger triangle. So already I know my scale factor needs to be greater than one. If I get something less than one, I know I did it wrong. So let's think ahead. That's a valuable thing to do. Think ahead. I need a scale factor that's greater than one. Another thing you want to do before you start to calculate, don't grab a calculator yet. Slow down and think. It even gives you this helpful little uh, advice here. Be sure to match up the corresponding sides. So corresponding sides are the sides that match up with one another. For example, in this triangle, triangle A, I can see that this side is the shortest of the three sides. So I need to match that up with the shortest of the three sides in the new triangle, which looks like it is this one, the 15. Looks like in triangle A, the smaller triangle, this is the medium side length of the three sides, and that's going to match up with the medium side length over here. And the longest side of this triangle, right there, matches up with the longest side of this triangle. So now I've matched up the corresponding sides. I see that side 12 is going to match up with this side here that has a length of 15. So if I'm going this way, I know I'm going to take 12. I'm going to multiply it by some scale factor, and that will get me 15. So 12 times what equals 15? Or I can turn around. I can say 15 divided by 12, 15 divided by 12 should equal my scale factor. So what is 15 divided by 12? Well, now that we've kind of thought this through, we've matched up the corresponding sides, we know we need to get a number that is greater than one because the shape is growing. Now I'm ready to calculate. When I see my answer, let's think about whether that answer actually makes sense or not. 15 divided by 12, and the answer is 1.25. So that scale factor is 1.25. That will, it is larger than one, it will make the shape grow. Uh, and so there is my scale factor in that particular dilation. Another way you can think of this whenever you calculate scale factor. You can also think of it as new side divided by original 
side. That's another way you can think of it. The new side length of 15 divided by the original side length of 12. So here's a case uh, where the scale factor was 1.25. I'd like to try one more with you just to make sure you got this. So here's another one. What is the scale factor? So again, I'm going from triangle A to triangle B, but this time it's shrinking. I'm going from a larger triangle down to a smaller triangle. So I need a scale factor that is going to be less than one since we are shrinking. Scale factor is less than one. But before I start calculating, let's be sure to match up corresponding sides. So the smallest side of this triangle is here and it matches up with the smallest one here. The medium length side of this triangle matches up with the medium length of this one. And the largest side length here matches up with the largest side length here. And so now I'm ready to do make this match. I'm going from, I know 11 on this one, and that matches up with 22 here. So I'm going to take this 22 times a scale factor, and that's going to be equal to 11. 22 times what equals 11? I don't know. So let's work backwards. Instead of 22 times what is 11, let's find the scale factor, SF, is going to be equal to 11 divided by 22. And remember, our scale factor needs to be less than one since we're shrinking, and I don't even need a calculator for that. 11 divided by 22, that's half. So that is going to be 0.5. So there is my scale factor. In this case, I'm taking all these side lengths and I'm cutting them in half to get the new side lengths. Um, shrinking, scale factor of 0.5. So always think about that first. When you're doing these, is the scale factor going to be greater than one or less than one? That's the most common mistake. People will go the wrong direction. And the second thing you got to do is before you calculate, match up the corresponding sides before you begin. So I hope this helps when you are trying to determine scale factors.